Thank you, Dr. Jadhav sir. Hopefully, we have time and uh, participants that are online for the last two and a half hours. I'm not, I'm not going to take much of time. I will try my level best. Actually, it is a, one of the big topic, very interesting topic. And we can discuss it for a, one hour. But in concise, I will discuss snake inhalation or snake bite in bovines. So within 20 to 30 minutes, uh, so I will finish this topic. All know that snakes are dangerous because of man and animals. And they bite when brought over human beings. Snake bite is common in grazing uh, animals. And uh, according to one estimate, 60,000 animals are dying every year in India. Even 20,000 human beings. They are dying every year in our country. My opinion, this number is less. Because uh, most of our country and among these 36, 50 are poisonous. And among these 50 poisonous snakes, who most common, uh, commonly encountered snake bites they include cobra bite. So among the four important poisonous, cobra is the most deadliest, and uh, there, these are the morphological features of the cobra. The length is six to seven feet. Cobra is black to brown, dark brown, and uh, the most important point to be noted that the snake uh, cobra injects 175 to 200 milligram of venom per bite. The venom of the cobra is always neurotoxic. To some extent, it is also daphnotoxic. This is the another snake, poisonous snake of our country. This is the most commonly encountered snake in the grazing land. And uh, this the snake is having lesser length than the cobra. And and uh, this particular snake is having brownish yellow color with the three rows, the three rows of black and oval spots. Venom injected by Russian Viper, 75 to 100 milligram, that is next to cobra. And the venom of Viper is neurotoxic in nature. This is the another snake, poisonous snake of our country. The length is uh, three to 3.5 uh, feet. And uh, this is again a brownish, uh, yellow, reddish snake having oval spots, having oval spots on the body. Head is triangular and the neck is narrow with a short tail. The venom injected by saw-skilled viper is 20 to 35 milligrams per day, or per bite. Again, this venom is hemotoxic in nature. The food poisonous snake of India is a crate, and the length of crate is 2.5 to 3 feet, which is very black in color with the that is having the quality of the venom of this thing is having the quality of the cobra as well as. Viper. This venom is more toxic than cobra, but the venom injected by prey is small in quantity. The snake venom is composed of number of enzymes, number of toxins, which include neurotoxins. The neurotoxins they are responsible for flagship paralysis, respiratory failure, and death. So cobra venom is rich in neurotoxins and therefore in cobra bite the, uh, the, the death is due to respiratory failure. 
cytolysins, which is the another uh, uh, toxin, is uh, predominantly present in the viper venom, which is responsible for tissue necrosis, intravascular coagulation, and that is the cause of death. Hemolysins are also present in the snake venom. Uh, even the cobra venom contains uh, hemolysin uh, that is responsible for erythrolysis, hemoglobinuria, and death. So this uh, uh, toxin is not, uh, is not predominant. Then the, apart from these three important toxins, the thrombase, protease, they are also present in the snake venom and they are responsible for the coagulopath brain tendency that may result in the overall effect of the bite depends on a mixture of specific toxins in a venom. Usually, the cobra is neurotoxic, vipers, they are hemotoxic, and uh, the crate uh, uh, produces neurotoxic as well as hemotoxic. These are the factors which affect the severity of the snake bite. These are the snake, uh, snake factors. The seeds of snake, cobra is most considered as the most poisonous. Actually, the venom of crate is highly poisonous, even it is deadlier, deadlier than the cobra. But uh, cobra ingests the largest amount of the venom, and therefore, overall effect of the envenomation of cobra bite is highest. And therefore, cobra bite is always considered as the most poisonous. Size of snake also uh, affects the uh, severity of the size. The large snake usually injects large amount of the venom and therefore it is more poisonous. Then uh, the first bite by the snake, maybe in the early morning, is more dangerous. Then animal factors, they also uh, affect the severity of the that can animation or the symptoms. Species of the animal, usually the small species are more prone and the signs are more severe, particularly in the sheep, goat, and even the cows. The size of animal, small size the animals, they are more severely affected. Therefore, cows, they are more susceptible uh, or they show more severe signs than the adult animals. The age of the animal, again, the young age, again, because of a smaller size, they are more, more severely affected. The location of bite also affect the case fatality rate. Usually, the bites for face region, they are responsible for swelling or throat region, leading to respiratory distress and uh, case fatality. The, these are the Results of the study which we have conducted at the College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences Institute in a period of uh, 10 years. So, season wise, we have recorded the highest number of cases in the monsoon season, followed by the post monsoon Because of uh, uh, luxurious growth of the uh, grasses, the grass. And uh, we have seen most of the cases uh, in the grief gardens during the monsoon season as well as the post monsoon that is October and December. In the winter, the cases they get reduced. Even in summer, the number of cases recorded were less. Sex-wise, we have recorded more cases in the male as compared to the uh, female. Uh, because the males uh, in India, usually the bullocks, they are being grazed in early morning hours and late evening hours. Uh, and uh, these are the times uh, you see the schedule for more activity of the next. That could be the reason why the males or the bullocks they are exposed uh, exposed to the uh, snake bites. Age wise, we have recorded more cases in the adult animals as compared to the young animals. Probably, uh, probably uh, the reason is that the the reason is that the young animals they are more vulnerable. In animals, they are more vulnerable, and uh, usually, young animals uh, they are more vulnerable. The disease is severe, environment is severe, and therefore there is a case fatality. That could be the reason the cases are not reported to the players. 
the typical clinical signs of the snake bite they include the progressive swelling at the site of bite, bleeding, lameness, dullness, depression, tachycardia, and dyspnea, particularly when the bite is over the face region. Sometimes the radiuri may be due to hematuria or hemoglobinuria. Nerve signs are observed, like uh, nerve signs are observed in case of cobra illumination, which includes the ptosis, that is a drooping of eye uh, and uh, even a drooping of head. Necrosis and sloughing is also, uh, it also occurs in, in cases which are not treated in time. Likewise, maximum bites were recorded on the front, four legs. Maximum bites, 50% of bites more than that, they were recorded on the front legs. And again, maximum bites over the right four. Uh, so that could be the reason. Uh, because the bites uh, uh, they occurred usually due to this, and therefore the place they were more exposed. Then, uh, uh, followed by four legs, the bites were recorded on the hind legs, and uh, followed by face. Very rarely we are recorded bites on the other. Of the case, we recorded the bite on the camera. Here you can see the uh, pictures. Uh, showing the uh, bites, the different animals. Here you can see the left foreleg, here you can see the left hind leg, then over the right side of the face, here again the right side of the face, here you can see the left side of the face impacted, and the right, right uh, hind leg is up. In buffer also, uh, you can see the bite over face region, more inclined towards the left side, here more inclined towards the right side, here on the left foreleg, left hind leg. Here again, uh, I can see the bite or the left uh, foreleg and uh, the right foreleg. The bleeding uh, tendency uh, really develops in a snake bite cases. And uh, generally, we assess the severity of the snake bite based on the severity of the bleeding. In actual clinical cases, you can see the bleeding uh, over the right hind leg. The bite was on the right hind leg. Uh, here you can see the passes, the bleed from the nose. Here you can see the bleeding from the eyes, so the hemorrhage is there, chirotic type of hemorrhages or the eye lead. Here you can see the bleed uh, or the muzzle ring. Again, here you can see the bleeding from the from the uh, you see the left pole. Here again, you can see bleeding from the lower, you can see the left leg. In one of the buffalo, you can find a, a severe bleeding uh, uh, from the anus. The blood was actually a frank red colored blood was present in abundant quantity in the dung, uh, which is why the or perineal region, and see the bite was on the right side of the face, and there was a bleeding from the right nostril. There was a bleeding from even a vagina. It was recorded in one of the cases. Here again, you can see bleeding from the left nostril. So this was an induced case of uh, experimental case of snake bite. Here you can see the frank mass uh, over the muzzle. The actual clinical case in which the fang mass were noticed in the actual clinical case. But here I would like to share that we have recorded a, a maximum number of cases without fang mass. The fang mass is considered as a typical sign of snake bite. In actual clinical practice, fang mass are rarely recorded, but only on a careful examination, thorough examination, we can see uh, fang mass that is very rare. Uh, one of the reasons that the key, uh, cases that are being uh, they are presented in the field, that is one of the reasons. And the another reason, presence of uh, hairs or the, uh, that could uh, cause of the hairs in, uh, or the fangs, fang marks are not traceable. Uh, on uh, laboratory investigation, uh, particularly the CBC reveals the decreased platelet count. Generally, the platelet count gets reduced uh, 
uh, and when it is less than one lakh, we consider that is uh, as a similar type of supply or a poisonous uh, bite. The blood clotting time is increased. The, again, a very typical laboratory finding is assessing the severity of the snake bite. When it helps in confirming the uh, technically confirming the cases of snake bite under the treatment. Biochemical analysis, particularly kidney function tests, helps in assessing the severity of snake bite. Increased burn and increased creatinine in snake bite is, uh, is usually seen, but in case no, for severe cases, these values are very high. So this is a program in uh, snake bite. Uh, usually the uh, RBC count is normal uh, on a day of admission, and uh, because of the probability, the RBC count will decrease. The neutrogram, the indication of a leukocytosis is there with the neutrogram. This is a very important, usually, the cases of snake bite that assist based on the bite. So you can see uh, uh, this uh, bite particularly. Uh, here there is uh, this the case fatality case fatality rate here you can see so case fatality uh, rate and survival rate usually the platelet count can be very well correlated with the case fatality rate lower the platelet count higher the mortality more the bleeding blood clotting time uh, blood clotting type more will be the case fatality rate. So based on and based on a little bit of severity of the thrombocytopenia, the severity of the case can be assessed. Usually, uh, see the when the the platelet count is uh, lower than twenty five thousand, you can see the mortality uh, mortality high mortality high, and when the platelet count is uh, greater than one lakh, greater than one lakh mortality. Then. So there are 100 percent chances of survival of the animal if the uh, platelet count is more than one lakh. And when it is less than 25,000, there are more chances of this fatality. The main case where you can see the AFT findings, usually the one and threatening values are. Uh, so the gross nutrients are concerned, uh, the key of findings in a, animals died of snake bite. This is the typical finding, which appears more or less similar to that of uh, uh, black water. See, uh, the limb is uh, swollen, limb is swollen and extended away from the body. So you can see the uh, boundary bone of the skin, uh, and you can see the blackish separation. And hemorrhages at the site of the skin. So, very likely it is showing extensive type of hemorrhages. Uh, even the uh, petechi and uh, echinotic type of hemorrhages, there are no peace in the visceral organ. The diagnosis of the snake bite can be very well made under the treatment condition based on the evidence of the snake uh, habitat uh, in the vicinity of the animal. We witness. Uh, this is very important. Many times, the farmers or the animal attendants, they notice the snake in the grazing land. And even sometimes, uh, the uh, snake bite is being also observed. This is, in my opinion, the most typical sign which is noticed in the grazing animals. Usually, grazing animals, when they are bitten, they show the restlessness. Characterized by shaking of head, or a leg uh, and a jumping. On bite, the animals they jump and uh, because of fear they run away. Then uh, many of the animals they show the uh, sudden and loud bellowing. So these are the characteristic features of snake bite in a grazing animals. These are the epidemiological factors which we can consider. Hot and humid climate. Uh, it is usually seen in the rainy season, and this climate uh, is uh, favorable. Uh, the grazing in a dense grass or a shrub field, usually in the months of August, 
of uh, September and October, uh, see the uh, grass is fully grown and it is dense with raised black, and therefore bites are more common during two months. Three months. The white cases they need to be differentiated from uh, uh, black water, uh, as well as the uh, you see uh, the whenever bite is for the face injury, they are need to be differentiated from the catches. Here I would like to uh, show the uh, differential features, uh, the features which can uh, help in differential diagnosis of strain. You can see the, the swelling over the shoulder region. Usually, in case of black water, the swelling first appears over the shoulder region or the arm region. So, this is the area where usually swelling forms. And this descends down to some extent, never be below the knee. Whereas, in case of the snake bite, swelling starts from fetlock and goes up. That is, it is ascending type of uh, ascending type of swelling. And finally, it goes up to the shoulder and then descends down to the breast cavity. So this is very typical. Generally, I use the terminology in case of black water. It is somewhat descending type of swelling from the shoulder, whereas in case of snake bite, it is ascending type of swelling. Characteristic feature. Again, in snake bite, there is no fever. There is no fever, and the most typical laboratory finding. So this this can occur uh, in all age groups, even black water, which is more common, a little bit more common in animals. Sometimes it occurs even in adult animals, and then it gets confused. But uh, remember these two features, then it is not difficult to different. Uh, again, I would like to uh, highlight the difference between the etches etches. And uh, the snake bite. Uh, whenever uh, there is a swelling over the face region, whenever there is a swelling over the face region, it needs to be differentiated from uh, HS. I would like to. Here, here you can see. This is typical. In case of uh, in case of this neck bite, the swelling is asymmetrical. Here, in this case, the swelling is more marked on the right side, whereas in this case, the swelling is more marked on the left side. Usually, snake bites maybe on the muzzle region, may not be in the center, maybe on the slightly left side or the right side, or maybe on the cheek. And therefore, swelling starts from either left side or the right side. And then that swelling ascends to the uh, uh, eyes, up to the eyes, and uh, even that swelling may spread to the other part. But if you see the animal from the front side, then it appears to be an asymmetrical type of uh, swelling. So here also you can see the asymmetrical. But in case of the edges, if you observe the animal from the front side, then if you will find a symmetrical type of swelling starts from the submandibular region and that extends to both the sides. So that is the typical. Again, I would like to uh, uh, highlight the differential diagnosis of parotitis. So, this is also encountered uh, in case of wine, in buffaloes, as well as uh, in cattle. But in parotitis, swelling actually starts at the base of ear. Swelling starts at the base of the air and then that swelling descends down. So that is the typical feature. And again, it may be unilateral or maybe a bilateral. Swelling at the base of the air may appear either on the left side or right side, or maybe on both sides. And from that point, the swelling descends down. So that is the typical feature. And usually, parotitis is accompanied by high fever. So we know to differentiate. The swelling, uh, particularly appearing in the snake bite, from its chest as well as the parotides. Again, in a recent days, there was uh, there was and still the outbreak of uh, 
this LSD is going on, even in the LSD, swelling is appearing over the limb and over the brisket. And it presents a picture more or less similar to snake bite. But uh, the, there is this, uh, one important clinical sign which helps in the differential diagnosis of snake bite from LSD. So in LSD, there are uh, lesions over the body. Skin lesions are typical. That is the can differentiate. Rarely, anthrax may get confused with snake bite because uh, uh, in case of the snake bite, there is a bleeding from natural orifices. Already, I will share uh, some of the pictures showing bleeding from vagina, bleeding from anus, and even bleeding from the limb. In that case, the snake bite gets confused with the anthrax. But in anthrax, there is a high fever. That is a typical picture. And in anthrax, there is no, neither there will be a swelling over the limbs. Uh, nor over the face region. So absence of swelling, rule of the issue is neck bite. And uh, in poisoning cases also, there may be bleeding, but uh, uh, swellings are absent. As far as the uh, management of snake bite is concerned, uh, we have to prevent the absorption of vena into the general circulation. Uh, so uh, this is the first aid. Whenever the bite is being observed, Keep the animal undisturbed. The uh, movement of the animal uh, will uh, increase the assimilation and absorption of the venom from the site of bite and uh, the spray will off the pattern. Apply the tourniquet. There are two small, uh, two schools of tourniquet. You can apply the tourniquet, but it should not be too tight and it should be uh, released and relaxed after a few minutes. Uh, in the old days, the institutes were given. Even uh, we, we have tried this method, but usually it complicates the thing and the necrosis will develop and uh, the healing of the wound is very, uh, it, it gets prolonged. And therefore, uh, generally, I don't recommend incision over the area. Application of tourniquet maybe for one or two hours till we reach, uh, till the animal is being taken to the hospital, the doctor, the door. Neutralization, this is the most important, this is a specific uh, therapy. So we have to administer the polyvalent and the snake venom. So as regards the dose, uh, there is no standard dose actually in any of the book. But generally, in large animal, 20 ml has been mentioned. So the two vials of the polyvalent and the snake venom, they are to be used. Whereas in a small animals, 60 to 80 ml. Uh, is being recommended. So smaller the animal, larger the dose of antivenom is required. Larger the animal, smaller the dose is required. Even in human, 8 to 12 vials of antivenom, they are being used. We are using the same venom for in, in animals. So large animals, they are surviving with just two vials of antivenom and within uh, maybe a two to four hours. So uh, as far as the rate is concerned, one ml per minute, it is to be given. Generally, it is to be given through uh, any fluid. Uh, adverse reactions are rarely encountered. Anaphylactic reactions may develop, but I have not come across with any anaphylactic uh, reaction. So to counter the local and general effects of venom, the fluid therapy is recommended. Corticosteroids may be administered. Again, there are two schools of thought, but uh, uh, as far as our experience is concerned, corticosteroids are beneficial. Broad spectrum antibiotics are recommended to prevent this bacterial infection, particularly caused by anaerobic type of uh, microorganisms, leading to necrosis and gangrene. Anti inflammatory drugs, again, the NSAID, there are two schools of thought, but we have seen that NSAIDs uh, they are, uh, they are uh, useful. Blood coagulants, yes, they are again useful. Blood transfusion also we have tried in some cases and it is really beneficial in a life-threatening uh, cases of thrombocytopenia. Stigmid can be very well used in cases of cobra bite. Diuretics, they are beneficial in, uh, you see, hassling the recovery. Drugatomy has also been performed and uh, uh, it, is, it improved life-saving, uh, particularly in cases of bite over the head and face region. Well, uh, there was a respiratory distress due to swelling. This is the treatment protocol which uh, uh, we have uh, we have standardized. Hundreds of cases of snake bite in cases of cattle and buffaloes. 
And uh, in my opinion, in our opinion, this treatment protocol can be effectively used for the management of snake bite cases. Polyvalent snake venom, minimum two vials. Then third and fourth vial based on blood clotting time and uh, the severity of thrombocytopenia. So uh, within two to three hours, if the baby is not coming under control, in that case, or thrombocytopenia is severe, we can go for third and fourth vial of antivenom. Amoxicillin is a safest antibiotic, neither hepatotoxic nor nephrotoxic, which can be used at the rate of 10 mg per day, five to nine days, to prevent the secondary bacterial infections and infections. Melogicam is a safest uh, NSA, which we have used uh, uh, in almost all cases uh, for five to uh, nine days. So, uh, in cases where we have given a steroid, for the first four to five days, we avoided melanxicam. And uh, in pregnant animals, we have used melanxicam in day one. Dextrose, five percent, can be very well used at the rate of two to six liter IV for three to five days. Really, this fluid therapy is important. Generally, we implement twice fluid therapy for first three days, followed by once for the next two days. Dexamethasone, uh, this what is right can be at the beginning, maybe 20 ml, that is 80 milligram on a day first, and uh, then uh, tapering dose is given over a period of three to five days. So, in a uh, very severe case, five days we have given, uh, whereas in moderate type of case, we have used dexamethasone for three days, that in a non pregnant animals, male animals. Uh, the furosemide uh, can be very effective in reducing. And uh, swelling, uh, and that can be given for three to five days. The carabuzoporum sarifum, that is a coagulate or stick uh, that we have used for three to five days. Uh, a year and deep complex uh, type of uh, preparation, they are used, uh, they can be very well used as hematidics, usually after five to five to six days. So, out of 69 uh, uh, cases, out of 69 cases, nine died, uh, four animals treat for the unknown. So, the uh, efficacy of this treatment protocol was found to be 86%. The cases which were presented in the late stage only died. Here you can see the uh, results of treatment before and after. The paper before and after. In uh, after those, here again you can see. How the animals improved gradually after swelling and pain uh, and day saving. So, here the tracheotomy was performed with a piece of snake bite showing the swelling over the face region and a severe respiratory failure. This is a rare case of a snake bite, particularly a cobra bite, leading to a hemoglobinemia, which we recorded. And uh, this case. Uh, Showed a dramatic improvement within 24 hours of administration of polyvalent antibiotics. This case was treated nearly 48 hours after snake bite. It is said that the snake anti snake venom should be given within 24 hours of the bite. But uh, uh, even after 24 hours of the bite, it, uh, it can prove useful. So these are the results. Clinical values before and after. Per program. Usually, the total RBC, uh, RBC count and uh, PC values they get decreased even after treatment, maybe on the fourth or fifth day. And uh, for the platelet count, this is very important. On an average, the, the average platelet count in the study was 27,000, which increased to like, uh, 23,000 uh, after uh, five to seven days of uh, treatment. This is a significant point. AFT again, the, there is gradual improvement. So, this is a, uh, all about the uh, differential diagnosis and the therapeutic management of snake bite disease. So, thank you.
thank you for, sir thank you for such a wonderful presentation and discussion so there are some questions so mr shinde sir to take few questions yes sir thank you so much bhai sir there are some questions in the chat box which i oh, uh, i will see uh, Ah, yes, here sir. the first question. Shall I read it, sir? Uh, nowadays, ah. why this Russell Viper uh, anti-snake venom is not working totally? Uh, your expert opinion on this, sir? See, uh, the, uh, the at present the anti venom available in the market is a, a polyvalent anti-snake venom. Uh, it comprises of uh, antibodies against uh, uh, cobra, Brazil's viper, and even the kraut. So there are four poisonous snakes of India. So antibodies are present against all these uh, four anti uh, against four. Uh, you can see the snake venom. And uh, in our study, uh, the anti venom was found effective. I have not come. Uh, you see, if anti venom is given in a very big way, uh, when the uh, you see the thrombocytopenia is very severe, or uh, uh, you can uh, or uh, you can see the type of hemorrhages they occur in the body, that uh, venom may not work because it is quite threatening uh, condition. The mortality of this. But if anti venom uh, is given in the early stage, early stage, and then it is uh, effective. Can we predict time of snake bite based on experience? Very notice. Yes, we can predict. And uh, uh, the uh, swelling usually uh, progressively gets increased. In the beginning, the uh, swelling appears at the site of bite. Within two to three hours, the that the swelling uh, starts progressing and uh, again it, it, it ascends, the, ascends and slowly and slowly it reaches to the shoulder and then uh, it descends down to the breast. Usually after 24 hours it uh, appears uh, in the breast region. And I have seen that usually uh, the swelling in spite of even uh, intensive therapy swelling goes on increasing up to 24 to 36 hours, up to 24 to 36 hours. And after 36 to 48 hours, swelling starts decreasing in a treated animals. Thank you, sir. It, uh, even over face, we can uh, very well assess base. Uh, you see, uh, it is a matter of expert. If you observe number of cases, you can uh, you can guess the time, uh, in the time and the uh, you can say elapsed between the bite uh, and the case is being presented. Uh, again, uh, we can take the help of uh, restlessness, help of uh, signs or history of uh, restlessness. From that point, we can, uh, uh, you can see, uh, calculate the time. Next, the acute condition that how platelets are decreased. Again, a very good question. Uh, again, here I have seen the platelet count is lowest after 24 hours. Uh, it, uh, after 24 hours to uh, within with, between 24 to 48 hours, it is low. And after 48 hours, the animals which survive, uh, those animals in the platelet count starts rising. Uh, and the decrease in the platelet count, mainly the platelets that are being consumed. Platelets that are being uh, consumed uh, in a blood clotting. Because of, uh, uh, and usually the platelet uh, thrombocytopenia is uh, very high or it is uh, very significant in cases of viperine bites. Because viper bites, they are hemotoxic in nature. So there is a severe capillary and uh, uh, damage or endothelial damage which leads to hemorrhage. And in a hemorrhage, platelets they are being consumed. And therefore, more the hemorrhage, more the bleeding, more, uh, more will be the thrombocytopenia. Then next, uh, what is the dose of 
polyvalent type is in venom for sheep and goat. Sheep and goats are again more vulnerable. Said that they are resistant. I don't think they are resistant. Uh, we, uh, the sheep and goats are also vulnerable to snake bite, and uh, they need more dose, higher dose of polyvalent anti snake bite. Based on the severity, again, we know to give. For cattle, I, I told that two vials, they are sufficient in most of the cases. Some animals, they need third or fourth vial. But in sheep and goat, they have to go for a higher uh, doses of antivenom. Most probably six to eight. But uh, I have seen uh, so many cases of even uh, snake bites in uh, goats. But probably the mild to moderate type of cases were reported, uh, where we could treat those cases. Very somewhat a different stage. We also, but a severe case of snake bite uh, cannot be saved with uh, just two vials of anti snake venom. They need uh, more than that, and uh, it is not cost effective in case of going for eight vials. That is not cost, but definitely they need more number.